In this lesson, I'm going to review how to determine the frequencies of the harmonics of a vibrating string. Now to begin, I want to review some of the terminology used when discussing sine waves. So here is a sine wave drawn with the green line, and we actually have a couple of wavelengths. The wavelength is measured from peak to peak, or crest to crest, or if you like, antinode to antinode. That would be considered one complete wave. From this mark here, we have half of a crest. Here we have an entire trough. And then here we have the second half of a crest, and that constitutes an entire wave. If I go from this point here, from this point to here is one wave, and from here to here is two waves. So I have a little more than two waves drawn with a solid green line. I've also drawn a dotted line here just to show you a partly a reflected wave. We do not measure the wavelength from this peak to that peak. It has to be of the same wave going in the same direction. So the green um, line um, suppose it's going from left to right, the dotted would be going from right to left because that would be the reflected wave. Now the amplitude measures from the baseline, also called the equilibrium, up to the top of the crest. And we can also measure the uh, amplitude from the baseline to the bottom of the trough, and we would refer to that as the negative amplitude. This amplitude and that amplitude should be equivalent in size. Now imagine that you took a fixed string, uh, like a string on a guitar, and you pluck it. Well, if you pluck it, we would expect to hear a particular frequency, a tone, um, a pitch. Those are all synonymous. Tone, frequency, pitch. And that would be the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic, and this is what it would look like. The string would vibrate up and down, just from one pluck, that one disturbance. Now the length uh, of the string I have designated as L, and because it's vibrating up and down like that, we see that we don't have any nodes in the middle. We only have an antinode in the middle. So that means that the length of this string is equal to half of the wavelength. So the fundamental frequency only has half the wavelength. So the wavelength of the fundamental frequency is equal to twice the length of the string. Now if we look at the second harmonic, Second harmonic has two antinodes in it, so that means we have a complete wave cycle in the second harmonic. So the length of the string corresponds to two halves, which is 2 over 2 is 1, or uh, the wavelength of the second harmonic is equal to the length of the string. And if we look at the third harmonic, the third harmonic has 1, 2, 3 antinodes, or it is made up of three half waves, or one and a half waves if you like, and the length of the string corresponds to three times half, or three halves lambda. So lambda for the third harmonic is going to be two-thirds the length of the string. Two-thirds, so we start here and we go two-thirds, that represents one of the lambdas right there, the uh, wave. We have one and a half waves here. Now, remind ourselves that the wave speed equation of uh, velocity is equal to lambda times frequency, or the wavelength times the frequency. Now, the speed of sound we know is fixed at a particular temperature. At 20 degrees, it's 341. So for the first harmonic, we can take the wave speed equation, apply it to sound, and the speed of sound is equal to the wavelength of the first harmonic times the frequency of the first harmonic. And we know from the previous um, slide that the wavelength for the first harmonic is equal to 2L, so I've substituted that. So we have a formula for the first frequency. The frequency of the first harmonic is equal to the speed of sound divided by twice the length of the string. Now if we look at the second harmonic, we can do the same thing and we see the second harmonic is equal to the speed of sound divided by the length of the string, one length of the string. Here it's two lengths of the string. And for the third harmonic, the frequency of the third harmonic is equal to three halves times the speed of sound divided by L. 
Now if you look here, this is the first harmonic. We can multiply that by 1. And the second harmonic, if we multiply this by 2 and then multiply this by 3, we can end up getting a general formula and include the harmonic number in the formula. So for the first harmonic formula, if we put a 1 here, this would be 1 half Vs divided by L. 1 half Vs divided by L. For the second one, we would put in 2 for the second harmonic, so this would be 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, well that's what we have here. We have 1 Vs divided by L. And then the third one, we have the third harmonic, so this becomes 3, so 3 halves times Vs divided by L, 3 halves Vs divided by L. So you can use this general formula to determine the frequency of any harmonic on a string.